All right, welcome back. So, um, so the next step we said is to actually play the file. All right, so again, back to the MSDN. So we want to be able to invoke this line of code. Good. All right. In order for us to be able to invoke run, we need a p control uh, pointer uh, pointer variable. All right. So again, we go back. Right. This is the code that we skipped. Right. So we did first the rendering because for me it makes more sense. And only now are we going to in extract m another interface. We just need one interface for now, the media control, the I media control IID. We're going to ask P graph, the graph builder interface. We're going to extract using the query interface method that P graph being an being an I unknown, right? Going back to com program programming, again two words. So P graph exposes three methods because every every interface in COM inherits from I unknown and I unknown is a requirement to implement three methods. One of the three is query interface. The other one we already saw is release. This one. And the last one that we still have not seen is add ref. But this is really not critical what we what we need to know for now is that we're able to ask the graph builder the p graph which is a variable that we already have we can ask it we can quer query it for an interface if you implement iid i media control right this is a numerical value that represents an interface so if you expose this interface, so please point this variable at it. This pointer, please point this pointer at it. So here is the address. Here is the address of a pointer to such an interface that we allocated, right? We allocated the pointer itself. The pointer, sorry, the pointer itself is on the stack we allocated the pointer. Here is the address of the pointer that we allocated. Please, please point this pointer at an object that you will allocate. Basically query interface might have to allocate an object and point this pointer at it. And this pointer will then point at an I media control type interface that is exposed by the class the filter graph class because all this time we're we'll talk we're, we're talking to the filter graph class right the p graph is a pointer to one of its interfaces all right that's basically the idea all right. I would say that most direct show programmers don't really. I would say, you know, statistically, I would say 98% of them don't really understand what's going on. They just know, right? This is what you need to do. This is the cookbook. This is what the cookbook says. If you want everything to run, that's what you got to do. So that's what we do. Very nice. Okay. So. So all right. So let's let's then. Let's define this variable on our stack in our program. So once we, we, we have the graph has been built, so control V. So we now have a pointer allocated to the iMedia control interface. And now we would like to ask the P graph variable, control C, Alt tab, control V. We like to ask it, we like to ask it, query it for an interface for the IID, iMedia Control Interface. We can use the, well, there is a plus sign here. We can see the numerical value behind it. F12, you could see the actual, 
right? The iMedia Control interface is right here. By the way, it inherits from the iDispatch F12, F8. This is the iDispatch. These are the, the methods it exposes. And here is the iUnknown, F12, F8. And here are address, release, and query interface. Very nice. All right. So, okay. So, as always, copy the throw if error and control X. All right. I see we did not yet release the P graph, so we can actually go back to this line. Maybe right button click an X. No, it doesn't like us. This, uh, no, doesn't like it. Let's try, let's try F11. Applying code changes. Successful. Let's see, HR is okay. So shift F11. And again, go back here. Right button click X. F10. And HR is S okay. So we have just asked P graph to to give us to allocate for us the interface, the I media control interface, and now P control, which a second ago, by the way, was I don't know if you noticed, was uninitialized. It was C C C C a bunch of C's. So now it's actually now P control is actually pointing at an object that is. It doesn't doesn't show that it's an I media control object. All right, doesn't do that. What can I do? It's a little bit strange. Let's you. Let's again try and f uh, and use the x and f10. I doubt that it's going to change its mind. Nevertheless, that has to do with the debugger, not with the actual co running code. All right. So so we successfully extracted the iMedia control interface from the p-graph. So we can now invoke the run method. Let's copy from here and go back to the Visual Studio and enter enter control V, control C, control V, control X, control shift S. F10 applying code changes, code changes applied successfully and F11 HR is S false. And S false, I don't know if we can go to, how can we go to the value of S false? It's a good question. Anyway, F11, is S false negative? S false is not negative. S false is actually the value of 1. So the failed macro, F12, when testing, is it less than 0? No, 1 is not less than 0. Where can I show you the value uh, S false and S OK. Let's see, Control I, S underscore, oh, there is S OK. Where is S failed? Well, you can see S OK is zero. Control I, S escape. Control I, S underscore, no, doesn't let me see S false. Too bad. All right. Ne ne nevertheless, you can see you cannot see the value. Of, right? It says, may, may, "Can I tell it the uh, hexadecimal? What can I tell it? Edit value doesn't show me the value. Terrible. How does it know to show that that, that it's it's as false? I don't know. Anyway, as far as I know, it's one. So that's not actually a failure value." Now what just happened? What happened is that the graph has just been run. So theoretically we should have been able to hear myself. Let's try this again. Maybe it was running in the background and we couldn't hear it. Let's try it again. Right button click X, F10. I can't hear it. Oddly enough. should be but maybe because I'm because I'm debugging the process so it might be that all threads 
are not running while debugging. So one of the threads is responsible for the actual playing. We'll discuss exactly how ultimately the sound waves travel or digitally um, uh, tra uh, converted to to the motion of the airwaves that hits our eardrums. We'll discuss it hopefully at length. We'll discuss what exactly is sound um, and we'll discuss exactly what happens, how exactly is the file converted to, to all these signals that ultimately we're able to hear. But for now, what I can tell you is that, yeah, basically this, all threads are frozen while debugging, right? So, 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 so nothing can move. Maybe the first, maybe the first half second, we can hear it. Maybe. No, I cannot hear it. All right, we still have around three minutes for this lesson, so let's try and add another line of code. From again, from um, from here, you know what? Even without this code, let's try and do something else. Even without their code, let's try and sleep. Right? That's a Win32 API function. Let's try and sleep for ten seconds. One, two, three. That's a ten-second sleep. So only this thread is going to be. Uh, suspended and the rest of the threads in the process are going to be free to run. So let's hit F10, applying code changes, code changes applied successfully, let's see what happens, even F11. It seems to be running, let's, let's resize and minimize and minimize and there is our ASF file. Good, after 10 seconds the file has not yet played completely, but the sleep was over, so our thread was uh, removed from its um, its wait state and brought back into um, the ready state. And now it's actually running in the CPU, in one of the CPUs. Ignore this, that's just an upload for one of the um, lessons. Back to our code. In any way, so um, so basically, we have succeeded in playing the file, which is, a, I would say, a reason to celebrate. Even very good. All right, but the idea of sleeping for ten seconds is not exactly the best idea. So we'll discuss why it's not the best idea, and we'll discuss better ideas, and we'll start, I guess with an invocation of wait for completion and then we'll discuss even more sophisticated techniques all right but uh, at this point we'll stop here and we'll continue this in the next lecture so thank you very much for being with us and we'll see you in the next lesson goodbye